Hello, I'm Brenda Cathcart, and this is Shadows of the Messiah. Today we're going to take a brief look at the Festival of Purim, which is the traditional holiday that is established in the Book of Esther. It commemorates the defeat of Haman, the enemy of the Jews. Esther 9, 27 and 28. The Jews ordained and took on them and on their seed and all such as joined themselves to them, as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their writing and according to their time every year, and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city and these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them should perish from their seed. So who was Haman? Haman was an Amalekite. He was a descendant of, the, of Jacob's brother Esau. The Amalekites harbored a hatred for Israel from the time Israel first came up out of Egypt. In fact, the first battle the Israelites fought was against the Amalekites. God pronounced judgment against Amalek for the way they attacked Israel. Haman, following in the path of his ancestors, plotted to have all the Jews killed. Esther 3, 5, and 6. And when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow nor worship him, then Haman was full of wrath. And he scorned to lay hands only on Mordecai, for they had revealed to him the people of Mordecai. And Haman sought to destroy all the Jews throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, the people of Mordecai. This unreasoning hatred of Haman reminds us of the hatred and persecution suffered by the Jewish people through the centuries, many times at the instigation of the church. So Christians can celebrate Purim as a means to repent of the actions of our church fathers toward the Jewish people. The prophet Daniel is a model for this repentance. When Daniel knew that the 70 years of exile of Judah were coming to an end, he repented of the actions of his, for, of his fathers. Daniel 9, 4 through 6 says, And I prayed to the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and awesome God, keeping the covenant and mercy to those who love him, and to those who keep his commandments, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from your commandments and from your judgments. Neither have we listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to your kings, our rulers, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. So even though Daniel himself was a great man of God, he did not consider himself separate from his fellow Israelites or unaccountable for the actions of his forefathers. So as the time of Jesus' second coming approaches, we as Christians need to confess the sins of our Christian forefathers and return to our God, who is the same God who is the God of Israel and all the prophets. What was the outcome of Haman's plotting? Well, it wasn't what he was expecting. Queen Esther, who was herself a Jew, although Haman didn't know it, exposed his plot. And he and his ten sons were hanged on the very gallows he had erected to kill Mordecai. The Jewish people were then given permission to kill those who would try to kill them on the day Haman decreed should be the day of their execution. But on that day, the Jewish people fought back and they won a great victory. So once again, in the future, this is going to happen again. As they have done throughout the history, the nations will gather against Israel to destroy her. And Jesus, who is a Jew, although many Christians don't seem to know it, will reveal that plot against Israel and will bring the nations to justice. Joel 3, 1 through 3 says, for behold, in those days and at that time, when I will bring again the exiles of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all the nations and I'm going to bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will fight with them there for my people and my inheritance Israel, 
whom they have scattered among the nations and divided my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a prostitute and sold a girl for wine so that they might drink. Well, like Haman, the nations continue to plot and cast lots, or Purim in Hebrew, for the destruction of God's people. Even now, our own nation, the United States, is pressuring Israel to divide God's land. In Esther's time, as the day of the decree approached, many people began to fear God and joined themselves to the Jewish people. Esther 8:17. And in every province and in every city where the king's command and his order came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for fear of the Jews fell on them. So Christians can celebrate the festival of Purim as a sign of solidarity with the Jewish people. The outcome of the battle when the nations come against Jerusalem will be the same as it was in the days of Esther. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will bring victory, and the Jewish people will once again prevail. Joel 3, 11 through 13, 14 says, Gather yourselves and come, all you nations, and gather yourselves together all around. Cause your mighty ones to come down there, O Lord. Let the nations be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the nations all around. Put in the sickle and reap, for the harvest is ripe. Come, come down, for the press is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. So in the final verse of the book of Esther, we read that Mordecai ruled second only to King Ahasuerus seeking justice and peace for his people. Esther 10.3 for Mordecai the Jew is second to King Ahasuerus, and a great man of the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking good for his people and speaking peace to all his seed. The book of Chronicles records the same thing about David's reign. Second, or First Chronicles 18.14 So David reigned over all Israel and executed judgment and justice among all his people. What do you think is going to happen when Jesus comes again? How is he going to reign? Well, to start with, he will save Judah, just like Mordecai and Esther did, and he will rule second only to God with peace and justice. Jeremiah 33, 15 and 16. In those days and at that time, I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up to David, and he shall do judgment and righteousness in the land. And in those days, Judah shall be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely, safely. And this is the name with which she shall be called, the Lord, our righteousness. So isn't it time for those who call themselves by the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, to stand with Israel? Come, let us celebrate together. I'm Brenda Cathcart, and this is Shadows of the Messiah. See you next time. Shalom and be blessed. Mm -hmm.